What's going on everybody? Riley Welch, owner of 92 Social. Welcome to the 92 Social Podcast. Today I'm talking with Chris from 416 Coffee. We chat about the family business. We were talking about coffee. It's a great conversation. So let's chat. What's going on everybody? Riley Welch, owner of 92 Social. And welcome to the 92 Social Podcast. Today I have a great coffee company on the podcast. We have Chris from 416 Coffee Co out of St. Catharines. What's going on, dude? How's it going, man? Dude, thanks for coming on the podcast. No worries, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, see, this, this is the, this, this podcast is the product of what, uh, of my mission statement is connecting and building community because I got introduced to you through Zach and Kevin's uh, Beverage Co. in uh, St. Um, yeah, I think it's in St. Catharines in uh, yeah. Niagara, like, but the Niagara the, region, yeah. The Niagara region. This is the reason why we're building this community, uh, one podcast at a time. Uh, so as I was going through uh, the website and all that, um, I noticed that, you know, 416 Coffee started in Toronto. Because that, that was my first uh, first question. And humble, I like that little coffee mug there. Just like That's it. Uh, a little... Yeah. Little plug, little plug. Yeah, little plug. I'm all about <laughs> plugging. I'm all about it. Let's lay it on. Uh, yeah. So before we get into actually the uh, the company, more about the company, we uh, I think we're gonna make a little French press, aren't we? Boom. Yeah, we're ready to go. Let's do it. Cool. All right. Pat. Okay. Scale. All right. So first things first, we're gonna need a scale. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zero up my scale here. I have some coarsely ground coffee. This is our, uh, this is our change roast. Uh, so super nutty, chocolatey, very approachable coffee, uh, coarsely ground. I'm going to do a 250 gram brew. So I'm going to add 16 grams of coffee. So I have 16 grams in there. Yep. And I got my kettle. This guy is just off a of boil. Oh, oh, I love that kettle. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just said, honestly, this is a simple uh, Hamilton Beach kettle from Walmart. Very cheap. Really? Damn. Yeah. Okay. okay I got some, like, I don't know, some like. Uh, hey, that goes. works too, man. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so All then right. I'm just going to add 250 grams of water. I'm just going to give this a swirl around and I'm going to pop the top on and we're going to let this guy brew for like five minutes. All right. All right. Cool. Boom. Yeah. yeah. I forgot. I forgot to grab a spoon too. So I, <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, we were like switching, like mix it around. I'm like, yeah, oh, uh, I need a, I need a, <laughs> I need a Perfect. So let that steep for five minutes, you were saying? Yeah, we'll let it rock for five minutes. I'll start a timer over here. Beautiful. Nice skill. Boom. Perfect. Making coffee and talking about it. All right. That's it. That's Pretty it. Cool. This is the dream. So yeah, let's tell us about the uh, tell us about 416 Coffee, how it went from Toronto to uh, St. Catharines. Yeah, so the story starts with my dad. My dad started um, when he came back from Italy. He went to he was born in Toronto. Went to Italy as a youth and then came back. And when he came back, he was an espresso machine technician. So my dad was uh, fixing espresso machines kind of across the city. And his cousin John was a roaster for one of kind of like the old school Italian roasters up in the up in the kind of Vaughn area um, at the time. So my dad was like fixing espresso machines. And then he was kind of dabbling in coffee, like starting to roast a bit, trying to find like other people's equipment to use and figuring it out. So kind of non-linear journey, this coffee roaster in Toronto, I don't even know their name, they go out of business and the landlord has no idea what's in the unit. So the landlord's asking for like a pretty minimal amount of money for the contents of this industrial unit that this roaster went out of business in. Oh man. Yeah, so my dad finds out about it and I think the guy just wanted whatever was owing in rent. So my dad comes into this opportunity to buy this, um, this roastery. So he buys it. And inside is like a, a massive two batch um, uh, Jabez Burns coffee roaster, which is like, if you had to replace a two batch coffee roaster today, you're looking at like $350,000 for, 
Yeah, for something modern, like it's in the hundred, it's like a house. Oh God. Now, obviously this is like an older roaster, but if you have to buy right. one new today, hundreds of thousands, like easy. So, so my dad just kind of stumbles his way into that and then starts like experimenting with roasting coffee. So mm-hmm. this is still happening in Toronto. Now we're in like the late nineties and my dad, my dad is doing this commute because he married my mom in 93. Uh, I believe they got married in 93. I came along in 95. I'm like trying to figure out, was it 93? I think so. They're like, oh no, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be watching this just pissed. Um, no, so they got married. I was born in 95, that's for sure. And then, um, yeah, so late 90s, my dad's doing this commute, running this coffee business in Toronto. And he's pretty much just doing wholesale, like just supplying restaurants, cafes, that kind of thing. So then my dad moves the factory down to the Niagara region in 2001. And he's doing wholesale and he has like a very small kind of storefront um, area. And he's he's doing pretty well for himself, but it's – like it's, he's busy. He's like a one man show running this whole thing. So then um, I'll make a note too of saying my dad was before his time in the sense of um, with single origin coffee. So my dad was doing single origin coffee in 01 when people were like on the kind of the flavored coffee trend. They were called, do you have anything hazelnut? Do you have this? Do you have that? My dad was trying to sell you like a coffee from Tanzania or a coffee from Brazil and kind of trying to educate people on those differences. So he was paddling for the right wave just kind of early um, and then, so he ran that business though, B2B, small storefront, kind of until 2008, 2008, the financial collapse hit. And my dad was very exposed to the States. He was doing a lot of work across the border as well. And he just had like tens of thousands of dollars of like bad debt just overnight. Like people just couldn't pay people shut their doors. Um, so he was, he, he shut down the coffee business kind of shortly after that. I believe in like, Oh nine, he got out of the coffee business. We had an interesting foray into the restaurant business. And then in 2015, I was like, we should reopen the coffee business. I was two years into my marketing undergrad at Brock, um, doing my BBA. And I was, I just thought there was a need for it. I saw what was happening in bigger markets like Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, out West, like, um, Seattle, um, you know, obviously like LA, uh, New York, Chicago, any of those big markets, I saw what was going on there. And I'm like, there's definitely a need for like specialty coffee in the region. So we reopened up the factory and we were exclusively just business to business and online for about four and a half years. We just rocked online store, B2B, um, kind of just grew, built up. And then a year ago, we had an opportunity to do a like kind of a unique retail spot in Port Luzi, which is kind of like a, a lakeside community in within St. Catharines. Um, and yeah, we've rocked that place now for just over a year and yeah, just continuing to kind of grow and build the, build the business. But that's why we're 416 Coffee. So the name stuck the whole time. Um, but yeah, we we're very much like local to the Niagara region now. Yeah, that, man, that's, that story alone is inspiration for anybody who is thinking about starting a coffee business or just a business in general, where, you know, maybe it's not the right time. So maybe hold off on that idea. And then now you're saying, now's the time because there's a market for that. There's a market for you know, craft coffee. There's why not? Let's take a shot at it. hundred percent. hundred percent. And yeah, it's like, if you're ever starting a business, I'd say like, um, sometimes you're early, right? Timing's a big part of it. Timing's the kind of thing that you get lucky with sometimes in business. Right. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing is just to start. Like you're not, you're always going to learn about the market more by being in business than I think anything else. Like we oh, sure. had like a million micro pivots, even in the last like year um, yeah. of like changing products, adjusting things. Right. So you're never going to get better feedback than when you're actually doing it. And you have like customers giving you feedback. Oh, for sure. And then with the uh, customers and your clients, the, what I've noticed is the BYOB, it's not the, you know, you know, the party, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And then yeah. I, read it, I was like, ah, smart idea, smart idea. Uh, so where did that idea come from? Man, we are, we're not creative at 416 Coffee. Everything that we think of just comes from customer feedback. So um, obviously with people being more environmentally conscious now, um, people wanted to, people were telling me like, hey, the only place I can get beans, like kind of where I can bring my own container and get it filled is the bulk barn. So I was like, okay, great. So we were able to just kind of install um, shoots and, and figure out a way of having a BYOB program where if someone brings in a clean container, 
we can like weigh the coffee and fill it for them right there on the spot. They save a bit of money and like they're happy because they're not creating any more waste. Dude, like this as a consumer on my end, it's, I think that's amazing because for me, when I go and reach and try new coffee, the one uh, thing that I hate is that I, and I, I'm all for paying premium price because it is a premium bean. I get that. It's just when I open the bag, it's just like, you're not, it's not where you, it's not where you're expecting. And then, but if you see it, if you actually weigh it and if you pay your weight, I'm all for it. And I think you get more quality and more quantity uh, for your buck. So I think that's a, a great idea. This guy, this guy's ready to plunge, by the way. Oh, buddy. Thank you. Good to go. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh, this is my favorite part about the French press. Just the, the slow plunge. It's essential. Yeah. Beauty. So do you drink oh. your coffee black or like what's your coffee? Of course. Oh, you yeah, have, yeah. You have you have, if you if you're in the industry and you don't drink your coffee black, I mean, yeah, just forget it. Just sign. You're yeah. done. You're done. Yeah. Just it's over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's it. Just make something else. Go into start another business. Yeah, no, for anyone watching, if you want to go into the coffee industry and you don't drink it black, think about something else. Just <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the best thing I heard in a while. Yeah. No, like even like side note with my friends where like, oh I've I swear to God. Okay, so I used to work in like the uh Hamilton region. So and like Timmy's are like everywhere. Yeah. And then I I think I heard a few times where it's a four by four. They get people got a four by four, they got like double double. I'm like, no. Have you ever no. heard of a Gretzky? Oh god, no, what? Yeah, it's nine nine. Are you kidding? <laughs> Not that in the small cup? That's disgusting. <laughs> oh, yeah, you gonna, what are you doing to your body, man? You can get a uh, venti pike roast with a uh, Gretzky if you like. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I was hoping you said, like, whiskey. I was hoping you said whiskey there. His whiskey's pretty good, though, too, but yeah. Oh. That's, a different, that's a different that's podcast. That's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's the After Hours podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, that, I, I always say, uh, like, to judge a, a coffee, you have to drink it black. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Because when I have, like, although, like, Timmy's is like Timmy's. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, when you have a black coffee, you can, you can really taste the, like, quality. And that's why I, I slowly start, even though I'm drinking a Tim Hortons mug, uh, slowly getting more into the micro coffees, more of the you know, real coffee, because that's like that's what you need, man. Like that's all you need is black coffee, maybe with a little milk, maybe, but like that's it. Hundred percent. And like with the, I mean, the good thing about the roasters, I mean, you, are you living like in Toronto proper? Yeah. Yeah, like you're supposed. So I mean, those roasters up there, they're employing a lot of people. They have good like equity practices with how they're sourcing coffees. So. Um, yeah, when you're supporting like an independent roaster, whether it's one of the larger ones or one of the smaller ones, I think like for the most part, it's, you're really voting with your dollars about like sourcing something that's more sustainable, something that's better for your community, for the communities that are growing the coffee. So that, and that's hugely important too. Oh, hell yeah. And especially in a time like this and the reason why I started this podcast is to some support your community, support the Canadian community, any which way you can. And uh, yeah, dude, like I totally believe that. And, uh, but on that note, uh, while I was on your website, there's another thing that kind of caught my eye is the quiz, dude. Yeah. Like again, especially I'm look, I'm trying to look at it as for someone who's getting into the business, where not like they don't really know, you know, the the tones, the flavors, or the you know the different blends. Having that little small comparison is a great start off point. 100%. It was meant to be super simple. And I just, I kind of, once again, we're not creative. I just took the language I was using when I was selling coffee um, in store, when I was there, like helping someone walk through the process of picking a bag in store. I took that language and just put it into a simple quiz just to give you some sort of guidance. Because unfortunately, like our industry can be kind of like the wine industry in the sense, it can be very like intimidating if you don't know what's going on. Um, depending on where you go, I've had experiences where guys have come off like really pretentious, really like, Oh, you don't know this. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's kind of like, they're, they're speaking down to you. It's like the coffee. Oh guy. My God. Dude, I just had a conversation with a guy who's like that. 
hundred percent, man. They they exist. The, the coffee gods, man. They're talking about like kettle circles and shit. It's like I I don't know what to tell you, man. Like it's, it's serious, but it's not that serious. Like that. Okay, yeah, exactly, man. Because like I was talking about it. It's like, oh yeah, it's like you know, it's this and that. You know, it's not good. I mean, you should not do that. You should do this. I'm like, oh, I just want a cup of coffee. Like yeah, yeah, what like in the right direction, man. And the thing is too is like it's we operate as an industry, we operate in the subjective. Yeah. You might think something's awesome that I hate, right? And that happens with like with the food in general, right? How many times do you go to a restaurant and you tell your buddies, you're like, yo, I went to this place, it was amazing. And they're like, Yeah, I went there, I I hated everything. You know what I mean? So it's we operate in the subjective too in coffee. So as long as you like what you're drinking. I mean, it does, I, I'm assuming it's black. Like once you get to the point of drinking black coffee, if you enjoy it, I'm like, okay, that's good. Whatever you like, you like, you know, and maybe try this, maybe try that, expand your palate, but. No, yeah, for sure, dude. It's uh, it, like the food and beverage industry is very, you know, open where, you know, like you were saying where you can like one thing, but your buddy doesn't like that. He likes the opposite. And as long as you have a brand that's, you know, connects with anybody like everybody have a great quality that's that's the thing you have to focus on and that's the only thing you can really hope for uh, but for um people that are getting into the coffee industry again and they're looking to you know uh make a coffee but not just a simple coffee drip they're thinking about maybe at the french press uh, yeah. and with your brew uh, brewing guides what is the best um brewing method for someone who's getting into the industry that wants to do something fancy, but it's also like easy. I actually did a video about this. So I'd suggest, um, I suggest the, the, the AeroPress. Okay. I so, so the AeroPress is unreal because it's kind of like a hybrid brewer. Whereas like with the French press, like this guy, you just have a metal filter. Mm -hmm. um, with the AeroPress, you get a paper filter, but it's still like kind of an immersion brewer. The other thing that's nice is it's very forgiving. Like as long as you're kind of keeping your ratios consistent, like measuring your coffee and using like good water temperatures, it's very, um, it's very easy to get consistent results. The other thing is it's like indestructible. It's plastic, so you can't break it. You can travel with it. And it's, um, it's good for creating like just one cup at a time, which is nice. Um, if you're looking to brew kind of larger volumes, I'd say like, yeah, French presses are great for starters. Um, and then once you dive into anything where you're pouring like hot water over the coffee, like Chemex V60, Kalita Wave, uh, Kinto Slow Dripper, kind of all those things, you get into more complexity and just more kind of gear to get started. Cause then you need, well, you don't, I mean, you don't necessarily need it, but you probably need a gooseneck kettle. Then you're worried about like filters. Those brewers are a bit more expensive. You're definitely going to need scales. So I'd say like starting off, I'd recommend the AeroPress or the French press. Oh, great. That's great. Cause it's, I've seen the AeroPress everywhere and I haven't really tried it, but uh, that's a great, uh, that's a great idea. Uh, so on the YouTube channel and you were mentioning that, you know, uh, you listen to your customers, which is honestly keep it simple. And that's how you get things done, man. A lot of that's people it. overthink it and you, you, I can already tell that you have a marketing background. Uh, cause you listen to who's buying your product. What do they want to do it? So I'm only guessing that's the YouTube you were saying before, uh, that kind of got introduced because of them. Is there, a, was there any challenges or was there any like, uh, uh, success stories or anything that are like, you know what? I know we listen to them, but it's also a good reassurance that like we're doing something right. Um, in general with like making content, it's always been good when someone comes in and they say like, Hey, I watch your videos or I watch this and it's making like, I'm making my V60 better or like, Hey, I didn't know this about coffee. This is really helping me. Yeah. So that's yeah. been, that's been huge. Uh, so that's always good when people give us positive feedback like that. Um, yeah, I'd say other than that, just like really trying to make coffee approachable. I feel like, like we talked about before, a lot of the industry can be pretentious and like, um, maybe if you're just getting into it, they overcomplicate kind of the shit out of everything where it's really just got to be about like making something that you enjoy doing that simply. And then like, if you want to go down the rabbit hole of like kind of the geekery of it, you're more than welcome to, and we can like support you in that too. But for the most part, it's like, let's just get you brewing like a really good cup of coffee at home. Man, I see this is, I love that idea. Just keep it simple. Show 
you know, be like, as simple, like show people how you make a good cup of coffee and then they'll, they'll be hooked. 100%. Absolutely, man. Uh, so getting more into the business and you were mentioning that you, uh, you know, your business is growing and uh, you had the retail store for a year. Are you guys, uh, like, I know some groceries are, you know, on that little edge where they're good and they're about to introduce the private label. Uh, I know that's a big topic for a lot of uh, roasteries. Is that something that you guys are interested in or? Yeah, like doing private label for commercial. Is that what you mean? Uh, commer yeah, commercial. Yeah. Go ahead. So right now we're actually not touching that like with a, <clears throat> with a 10 foot pole simply because when we sell our coffee, especially in the region, yeah. um, people are coming in mainly for an experience. They're being educated about the coffee. I'm um, kind of the the selling features we have around the coffee are, are quite substantial. So if I did a private label, if someone's not offering that other support, I mean, someone might have a poor experience making the coffee at home and then blame the coffee. Um, also it's just, yeah, it's just kind of not of interest for us right now. We're trying to build our brand really and just focus on continually building like a D to C company at the end of the day, like direct consumer. Um, we just launched a subscription model that's doing really well. Um, where we're offering like some insane value. So that's, that's kind of where we're focused. Just continually growing our own brand, our own business. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's awesome. That's good because every uh, coffee company is different. Uh, and then, no, I, you got to take care of your own before you take care of someone else's. And, uh, no, I get that. Uh, so, like I mentioned before, I got introduced to you. Uh, I got introduced to uh, 416 Coffee Co. from a previous uh, podcast guest out of the Niagara region, Zach from Cavus. Uh, beverage co uh he mentioned you guys did a little project or there were you guys were talking uh yeah. i'm curious like what like what was uh what was the final product or what was the process so with zach um and kavas we uh we use a couple of their syrups like in our actually storefront to do like some fun yeah some fun like lattes and stuff like that so with with any of our products we have we have kind of the hardcore stuff like you know we're doing like origin pour overs and different espressos and all the different extraction methods and we have the stuff for like the guy who wants like a hardcore coffee experience and then we have like kind of the stuff for someone who's like entering into our world who's like i usually go to starbucks or somewhere and i want something with like some fun in it some something sweet right like so we have those things too and zach makes um a couple of syrups he makes one that's used for old fashioned oh yeah it kills maple Oh yeah. He kills in a latte. So we use that. And then he, like his lavender honey Jasmine one, we use that one too. And it's phenomenal. So we use those two. Um, and we're working on something right now with their cherry hibiscus as well. So oh, yeah, man. they're great to work with. They're local too. So we try to support within our community. Um, if we are buying anything. So yeah, man. Yeah, no, that, that's another reason where it build a like partnerships, branding and all that. That's awesome to also that you guys are connecting. Uh, so what is your favorite brewing, uh, gear item of all time? I mean, like besides an espresso machine, cause usually I'm a black espresso guy. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're like, spoiled obviously with the cafe and stuff. And with the, even at the roastery, we have like, it, like big three group industrial La Marzocos, which are you know, nice to just have readily available to pull you shots of espresso. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd say, other than that, I'm a big fan of the Kalita Wave, kind of the flat bottom brewer um, for doing pour overs. Just seems to get like a very complete extraction. Um, I use the Mellow Drip, which is like this device that you pour water over and it helps like with dispersion. Um, which, I mean, according to refractometers, which are like these geeky scientific pieces of technology that calculate total dissolved solids, so, or help you calculate total dissolved, dissolved solids. So according to that, those two, kind of brewing devices do a really good job of getting a, a complete extraction in the cup. Oh, right on. Yeah, like I'm learning right now. Okay. I'm like, I'm making a note. I'm like, I'll check that out later. Do yeah. Some, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just like, so fancy. You can impress my friends and stuff. Uh, That's cool. it. <laughs> uh, so like the final question uh, for 416 coffee, what are your like core values? Like what, like how do you guys develop a brand or develop your product? Is there like anything that you kind of go back on? So, you're developing a new blend like it has to have you know consistency the quality or so on and so forth like what are those qualities yeah i'd say like for 
for product development, it's all about like what what's coming out in the final cup. Like how are people reacting to our coffee? How are people enjoying our coffee? We cup, we do like a ridiculous amount of cupping with every crop we get from farms. We're cupping it like at multiple different roast levels to figure out which kind of level is bringing out the, the best in it. Um, and we're actually just in the process of opening up those cuppings to our community as well. So yeah, for us, it's, we're very community focused. We want to have um, our customers have a great experience and have a say in what the product's going to look like. And we want to have like relationships that serve kind of everyone um, from like all the sh- uh, stakeholders rather. So like from, you know, farmers, from our, the importers we work with to like our customers, to the people in our community. So like, for example, our change roast is a, uh, is a coffee we develop meant to be super approachable, nutty chocolatey um, ve- coffee that tastes like coffee for someone who's getting into it. And we, $2 from every bag that we sell of that year round goes to a charity that rotates quarterly um, within the Niagara region. So it's just about making a difference in our, a positive difference in our community and making coffee approachable for anyone. Fucking A, man. Right on, dude. That's awesome. It's good to support uh, local uh, charities and support a coffee brand like yourself. Uh, so, man, now, like we were saying before, now it's time to plug. Where can people find you guys? That's it. So if you go to uh, like 416-coffee.com, that's where you can find, like if you want to shop online, if you want to read more about us, um, all the brewing guides for like figuring out how to brew at home are all linked there in a drop down. If you want to watch any videos, um, check us out on Instagram, 416 underscore coffee. We're pretty much 416 coffee or 416 underscore coffee everywhere. So if you check us out, any platform like TikTok, Facebook, whatever you want, we're there making content, um, educating, having some fun with it. So yeah, that's where you can find us for anything. Awesome. And uh, uh, four hours and uh, what are they? We're, we're nine to five daily right now. Um, there might be changes coming up. We're just kind of waiting to see what's going on with obviously the state of the union right now. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty unpredictable. So right now we're nine to five though daily and you can just come in and yeah, we can buy bags. We got brewing gear there. Um, we have obviously a full service bar for coffee and stuff like that. So yeah. Right on, man. Yeah, so Chris, man, thanks for coming on the podcast. It was a great conversation. Um, yeah. So like Chris said, everything will be down below, all the uh, social links, the websites, everything that you need to know. Uh, like you said, they're open Monday to Friday or a daily nine to five. Uh, so go on, check that out. If you're in the Niagara region, Hey, if you're going to wine country, stop by. That's it. Might as well. Hey, you need a cup of coffee after you have a few drinks. I'll tell you that for free. Absolutely. String <laughs> out. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. And cut. Thank you very much, Chris, for coming on the 92 Social Podcast. Episode one, season two. There we go. Uh, all his social media will be down below. TTC, thank you very much. And all mine will be down below as well. So remember, I'll see you next week. Take care.